ومعنا مباشرة من واشنطن عبر الأقمار الصناعية من مقر صندوق النقد الدولي السيد سوبير لال رئيس بعثة صندوق النقد الدولي لمصر بعثة الصندوق كانت في زيارة لمصر منذ يعني أيام قليلة واتفقت البعثة وطبعا دي كانت بعثة على مستوى الخبراء وكان هناك اتفاق بشأن الدفعة الثالثة من قرض الصندوق هنسأل آه مستر لال عن آه يعني آه تفاصيل آه ما تم تقديمه لي او ما سيتم تقديمه لمجلس ادارة صندوق النقد الدولي وبموجبه تحصل مصر على الدفعة الثالثة من آه قرض الصندوق. مستر آه لال جود افترنون اند جلاد تو هاف يو ويز اس اون سي بي سي. جود افترنون لميس اتس جود تو بي ويز يو. Um, you've reached an agreement with the Egyptian government uh, on the second review of the economic reform. What were the positives and what were your concerns regarding that review? Uh, yes, Lemis, we uh, concluded staff level agreement two weeks ago on the second review of the authorities program that is supported uh, by the IMF's EFF arrangement. Uh, and so in terms of process now we are preparing our report and recommendations and that will be uh, discussed by the IMF's executive board uh, which would approve the review hopefully sometime in late December but that depends on the schedule of the executive board and once that is done uh, the next disbursement which is of about two billion US dollars would be made within a day or two of that the exact timing of the board date has not yet been determined but we are aiming for late December mm. in terms of substance we have seen uh, you know the program is uh, very much uh, on track and we've seen some positive developments and maybe I can highlight a couple of them or a few of them uh, on the monetary policy side we have seen inflation now uh, coming down for the last three months uh, since the peak in July and when we look at monthly inflation trends that's uh, becoming quite clear and we expect that to continue and this is uh, importantly because of the central bank of Egypt's uh, monetary policy stance which is appropriate and has been uh, effective in uh, creating this disinflationary path. Uh, annual inflation will come down noticeably in November and December, but that's because also the base effect from last year's uh, uh, depreciation of the pound will wash out of the numbers. Uh, but the disinflationary path remains uh, on track, and so uh, we are uh, uh, seeing that uh, inflation should come down steadily over the next year and into single digits by 2019. On the fiscal side, we've also seen uh, progress on the authorities' uh, structural, uh, the consolidation efforts, and uh, they, uh, the budget is on track to register a small primary surplus, and that's the budget surplus excluding interest payments uh, for this year. And uh, so uh, uh, that also looks to be uh, on the right uh, trajectory. And it's also important uh, to point out that uh, social assistance programs, um, especially uh, uh, the cash transfer programs, Takaful and Karama, for instance, have nearly doubled in the coverage of households in the last year. And that's been certainly very good progress. Uh, that's something that we've seen and we, we think is very much uh, on, the, on the right path. So, and so, that's, so these uh, are the positive, important. yeah, these are the positive uh, things that you've seen. What about your concerns? Yeah. What are you concerned about? within that reform. Um, well, we're still uh, working on, on finalizing our report, but in terms of risks, what we see, uh, they're mainly on the external side, and there are a number of things that we always are watchful for. One is on oil prices. If they were to rise and stay high, that could uh, create pressures for the budget and also for the outlook, so that's something we need to be mindful for. Also, any changes in the global financial conditions and global financial markets would be something, or any changes in the the regional security situation. That being said, uh, the authorities have a very strong track record in the implementation of policies and they enjoy very strong credibility, including in international financial markets, so that mitigates the risks that we see to the outlook. Are you concerned about the debt, the foreign debt, especially the external debt that is reaching uh, nearly 44% of the GDP? Is that a concern? Well, uh, the 
the whole uh, program of the authorities is designed around reducing the debt over uh, and putting it on a sustainable downward trajectory and that includes of course both domestic and external debt now uh, given uh, the implementation of the program and it's built around fiscal consolidation so uh, as long as the fiscal consolidation remains on track it will help reduce the debt sustainably so uh, as long as that's on track we're not worried about the debt trajectory trajectory uh, uh, over the uh, horizon. Uh, the numbers may look okay and may look really promising. However, the people do not feel uh, uh, there is an improvement in their lives. Uh, when will those numbers uh, can be translated into uh, a better lives, a living standard for the people? Um, I think uh, that that's a very important question. I think one of the reasons that uh, living standards uh, do not are not being felt to have improved, even though what we are seeing, as you rightly point out, in terms of GDP growth and uh, has and in terms of unemployment, has been improving, and that's because of the impact of inflation in the last year uh, and during the course of this year, and uh, also the impact of fuel prices. So that, of course. Uh, does not translate uh, into the perception that things have really improved, although the underlying numbers show that the economy is strengthening. And, and the reason for that is, and uh, let me see if I may step back just one minute, the growth that was there before the authorities' uh, program was uh, initiated was built on uh, consumption and, in a way, uh, rising debt that uh, was uh, you know evident in a big current account and trade deficit as well as a big fiscal deficit so you know in simple terms uh, the egyptian economy was consuming more than it was producing so this was not sustainable growth and uh, you know eventually that would have become unsustainable and possibly disorderly so measures needed to be taken to address both these issues one is rising external deficits and borrowing as well as the fiscal deficit deficits and the only way to address them was through the devaluation the depreciation of the pound uh, to address the external deficits and uh, the fuel subsidy reforms that the authorities have undertaken to uh, start improving the fiscal balance now the impact of that is of course that the first round impact of that is in higher inflation and that becomes more evident but with the policies that have been put in place and the inflation track we are seeing, uh, we are confident that uh, the, the positive effects of these reforms will be felt in the near future and in over coming months and quarters uh, because inflation uh, will continue to decline. And so uh, in terms of living standards, that will be felt much more clearly, especially I think uh, 2018 will be transformational in that regard. But importantly, it will be built on uh, more solid foundations for the economy and more sustainable growth, which means an economy that is uh, consuming uh, as much as it is uh, producing and not uh, what was going on for a long time before uh, these reforms were implemented, which was that the uh, economy was uh, consuming more than it was produced. So it was a necessary short-term adjustment to deal with these imbalances, and the short-term impact of that was on inflation and uh, on, on the fuel prices. But uh, it lays the foundations for much stronger and sustainable growth going forward. But not only uh, the people do not feel the, 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 the improvement in the li or, or the translation of these numbers in their living standards, but we do not see the improvement in the real economy what we can see uh, is an improvement in the financial uh, in the papers and in the numbers in the deficit and uh, the growth figures uh, fine however the real economy the um, FDI the uh, uh, industry the exports uh, the improvement is really very mini minimal uh, when will this move because this is translated into jobs and that's this is what will yeah. uh, improve people's lives. Uh, yes, uh, I think, Lamis, you make a very good point. I think it's important to differentiate the short term or the near term from the long term objectives. I mean, the authorities' program's long term objective is, of course, to, to cr reach a higher potential level of growth for the Egyptian economy and to cr sustainably create jobs uh, for the growing population. And that uh, is the ultimate aim of all these reforms. Now, the short term macroeconomic 
uh, stabilization that I was talking about are important necessary conditions. And uh, But over the medium and long term, of course, uh, the factors you mentioned, increased investment, and this has to be private sector investment given the needs of the economy and exports need to rise. For that, macroeconomic stabilization is a necessary condition, but it is not sufficient. And the authorities are well aware of that, and they've made important, uh, uh, an important start to implementing reforms that are needed to improve the economy's long-term growth potential and to make it more uh, uh, welcoming uh, to foreign direct investment by improving the business environment, for example. And uh, the recent investment law and the industrial licensing law, those are important uh, beginnings of this process. Uh, and once this process of structural reforms, which have to address uh, you know, conditions that have been in place for many years and decades, they take time and they need to be carefully thought through and sequenced. So the first stage is macroeconomic stabilization. The second is you know, broadening the scope of structural reforms to create the conditions for private sector-led investment job uh, growth and uh, trade. This would also, of course, make uh, help the transformation of the Egyptian economy into a, a dynamic, modern, and flexible economy, which would become uh, an engine of growth also for the region as a whole. But, uh, you know, the process has begun, and we expect that process will continue. Uh, and, and those will be needed to ensure uh, high growth rates in the long term and sustain job creation in the long term. What is left uh, of the reforms to be implemented uh, during the coming year or, or two years, for instance? I think uh, there are a few key things that have, are already underway and that need to be, of course, carried through uh, uh, to, to ensure that the gains that we are now beginning to see in terms of macroeconomic stabilization are locked in. Uh, in terms of monetary policy, the Central Bank of Egypt's new uh, framework uh, for monetary policy and exchange rates uh, with, is, has been, and, and uh, letting the exchange rate float was an important element of that that is getting firmly entrenched over time and and that's something we see the process uh, very quickly uh, coming to to this uh, new framework and uh, settling in and moving away from fixed exchange rates that were the norm in the past so that's well underway on the fiscal deficit of course the authorities program has a five and a half percent adjustment over the course of three years that needs to be taken uh, forward uh, and, and underpinned by measures. And the third part is on the social assistance and ensuring that there are sufficient resources to invest in health, education, and social assistance programs for those who need it the most. So those are important things that need to be carried through to fruition. Important progress has already been made, and, uh, but uh, this needs to be taken through to completion. In addition, the structural reforms that I was just talking about, those will be important to get the process uh, uh, fully underway uh, once macroeconomic stabilization is in place to ensure that this continues. And, and those reforms, reforms are an ongoing process for every economy, yeah. and they will go on uh, over time and what, what was, conditions over yeah, time. What was your advice to the government uh, in terms of private sector, in, per, in terms of uh, uh, small and medium enterprises, in terms of, uh, of the interest rate? Uh, this interest rate uh, cannot go on uh, w with that level for the investment. What were your advice uh, in those uh, parts? So, uh, in terms of, uh, I think there was broad agreement that, you know, uh, or the objectives of the program are the right ones in terms of creating investment, employment, uh, and higher levels of growth. And that this will need to be led by the private sector and that reforms need to be undertaken to make sure that uh, uh, this kind of job rich growth is entrenched permanently. And so, uh, but at the same time, we of course also agreed that macroeconomic stabilization is an essential precondition. So there was agreement on, on all sides on, on those priorities. In terms of interest rates, well, there are two elements. One is that interest rates are uh, high right now because uh, the adjustment and uh, high levels of incl inflation required high interest rates to contain any second round effects. Now those we expect will start diminishing. The other part importantly for the interest bill is of course the stock of debt and the only way to reduce the interest cost uh, uh, on the economy is by reducing the fiscal deficit and the debt and that 
is obviously part of the authorities program so uh, you know it takes time but it's on the right track and so we think that the conditions for private sector investment mm. will also improve as interest rates start yeah. uh, normalizing and clearly uh, the fiscal uh, policy uh, plans of the authorities are very important in this regard in terms of uh, the expectations on interest rates and in terms of what uh, private sector investment So, Mr. Lal, I be, um, I, I, I'm running out of time. In 20 seconds, what can you tell the Egyptian people at the, uh, second, at the end of the second review? Well, uh, the second review will be completed when the IMF Executive Board meets for it. But yeah, what uh, I can say is that, you know, it's, it's clear that, uh, you know, the Egyptian uh, people and population has had to endure many sacrifices this year. But uh, it was necessary and in some ways unavoidable to get to a much more stable path. And I think next year will be transformational. It will be felt in terms of improved conditions, sustainability, and creating long-term growth. So, you know, their, their patience is very uh, highly uh, appreciated and respected. But we think that uh, the payoffs are beginning to come. So we are very optimistic about the future for Egypt and the Egyptian economy. I want to thank you very much uh, from Washington, from the IMF headquarters in Washington, Mr. Subir Lal, uh, IMF Mission Chief of, uh, for Egypt. I said Subir Lal, كان معنا من Washington رئيس بعثة صندوق النقد الدولي لمصر والذي قال في نهاية حواره معنا إنه يعني احتمال المصريين لسنة صعبة ده شيء بنقدره جميعا وإن العام القادم يعني جزء الأصعب عدى من الإصلاح الاقتصادي أما العام القادم فسيشهد بداية التحسن في الأوضاع سواء بالنسبة للدخول أو للاستثمارات أو للأسعار العام القادم طبقا لرئيس بعثة مصر صندوق النقد الدولي أفضل كثيرا مما مضى